disappointment just like filled my body. I was like, oh my gosh, like we're not gonna get to do our home birth and I can't believe I'm in labor right now. I can't believe we're gonna go to the hospital. Hey everybody. So today we are going to go through our birth story. <laughs> So it all started on the 4th of July. Um, 4th of July, that morning, I had some like really light cramping and I was feeling kind of run down and just kind of weird. Um, didn't think much of it, didn't think it was labor. I just thought it was more intense like Braxton Hicks, which I had been having previously, but didn't feel any cramping. Um, and so that kind of went on all day. Then that night around 10 o'clock, they got more intense and we're like 15 minutes apart. Um, and it was to where I couldn't fall asleep. So I kind of like wrote it out for a few hours. Um, and then maybe around like midnight, I think I woke up Ben mm -hmm. and was like, hey. I'm having contractions, I, I think. I think. <laughs> um, but, and Ben's like, no, there's no way, because it's like beginning of July and you're due mid-August. So we both were like, no, this can't be labor. This is just maybe like some like pre-labor stuff happening. Um, so Ben stayed up with me that night because it kept happening and we were like, okay, what can we do? I was like, let's, why don't I take a bath? Cause I know that that can like slow things down and help relax. So we took, I took a bath um, and it did make them further apart, the mm -hmm. contractions, um, but they were still happening. <sighs> And then tried to go and get some sleep and lay down and like labor that way um, but they were still coming right yeah and so I, that morning we texted our midwives and just told them what was going on told them well she took a bath and this is you know yeah this like is, she's this having... is how she feels and the contractions or you know and they thought oh it's probably Braxton Hicks try this cramp bark and then that will slow everything down yeah because we're like what can we do to make this stop because to us we didn't think we were in labor no. and so they're like yeah try this cramp bark tincture or tea um and so i then got the or his mom went out and got the um, herbs and we made a tea out of it and that seemed to help a little bit but i mean these contractions were still coming <sighs> And so July 5th, this was a Monday, it kept going on. Things were getting more intense throughout the whole day. Again, we were still in denial that we were in labor, or that I was in labor. Because um, we were like, baby's only like 34 weeks, you know, 34 and a half weeks. There's no way that this could be happening. So time goes on. It becomes like later in the night. Things, things are getting closer together, the contractions. Um, and more intense too. more intense <laughs> I definitely didn't sleep at all that day I was just you know trying to get through the the contractions um, and then it was like around 10 o'clock um, Ben connected with the midwives again and said hey like things are not slowing down they're now like a minute apart and then they basically said you guys gotta go to the hospital like the baby's coming um, yeah the midwives can't deliver the baby at 34 and a half weeks yeah we were planning a home birth and um, yeah they legally cannot deliver a baby at home 30, earlier than 37. Yeah, 37 weeks is like the cutoff. Yeah, so at that point then it was just like when Ben was on the phone with the midwife, um, I just like had all this like just disappointment just like filled my body. I was like, oh my gosh, like we're not going to get to do our <laughs> home birth and I can't believe I'm in labor right now. I can't believe we're going to go to the hospital. Like I was just like, oh my gosh, but 
you the know. last place we wanted to be but the last place you know so we had to go though we um, went there's a hospital like maybe 10 minutes from my house so we left and we went to the hospital yep so yeah ben's mom and sister brought us dropped us off and uh they checked us in um i was three centimeters dilated before they checked your centimeters like what were they trying to do? Oh, they were trying to take my blood. And what did we do? Or draw my blood. And we asked, hey, well, can we just do like quarter vials? And you know, how many vials do you need? Because we know that when you get your blood drawn, it lowers your immune system. When you're in labor, you're using like 90% of your immune, immune system, system to deliver this baby. So it's like, you don't want your immune system um, being taken away. So there was a little bit of a fight with that. The the woman that we had asked was not having it and was like telling us, no, that's not possible. So we, we, I mean, we kept asking and then finally when we got to like our nurse in the delivery room, she was willing to work with us and said, you know, I'll take very minimal blood, um, but if the lab denies it, if they need more, then, then we have to do it again. And we're like, okay, we're gonna take that chance. And then luckily it was fine and they accepted it, so. Which is how it should be, you know? They don't need a full yeah, vial or a half vial. They just need a quarter vial, you know? Yeah, and then so. every quarter vial she took, she showed it to me and she's like, is this okay? I said, oh, yeah, okay. okay. See, I don't even, I don't even remember that happening because I was just in contraction land. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I was in, um, going back to when I was checked in, three centimeters, um, and then they did have to do a really, like, quick ultrasound, um, just to make sure the baby's head was, uh, head down. Um. Which we already knew, because our midwives had checked that and told us. Yeah, and I could, I could, like, feel, I was pretty certain the head was down, I could feel it. Um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, we didn't do any ultrasounds throughout the pregnancies, pregnancy, <laughs> one pregnancy, okay. um, we didn't do any ultrasounds throughout the pregnancy, so I was kind of bummed about that, but that's okay, you know, like, there's just certain things we had to accept going into the hospital that would happen, um, yeah, no avoiding that, so, yeah, we're in the delivery room, they had me hooked up to things. They had to do like an IV, which I didn't want, but they just gave me some fluids and then they disconnected it. So um, nothing else was administered into my body. Um, and then they had like the little monitor to monitor the baby's heartbeat and then the monitor to monitor my contractions. Um, so we were finally checked in, I think probably around 11 p.m. Or maybe midnight? It was midnight. Midnight, okay. <laughs> so when we got into the delivery room, they had to do a COVID test on me um, just to make sure I didn't have COVID. And then... Um, I mean, they really stuck it up her nose. Yeah, it like made me cough. And yeah. It was pretty uncomfortable <laughs> when I was having contractions. Um, and then, yeah, then also the pediatrician came in and was just talking about how the baby, since the baby was um, born so early, would have to go to the NICU. And that was, of course, like another disappointing moment where you're like, oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> and you're just like, oh my gosh, I hope my baby's okay. Um, you know, it's like kind of freaks you out thinking they already have to go to the NICU and they're not even born yet. Um, and then they were asking us like the different medical interventions that we would want to. Yeah, so they kind of went through like, okay, you know, we have this Hep B shot, this is what it's used for, you know, is that something you guys want? We said no. Then they asked about the vitamin K, we said yeah. no to that. And then, the... and then there's like some eye gook that they put over their eyes, we denied that. Um, yeah, and then they said that since the baby's being born at 34 and a half weeks, might have a hard time breathing because the lungs might still be developing. So they wanted to give the baby a steroid shot and we were like, um, can we wait and see, you know, when the baby's born, if they're having trouble breathing, 
before we make that decision. And they said, yes, you can wait. Yeah, and then the other thing that they were asking us, or questions we were asking them, them were like, okay, when the baby's born, do you put it on Ashley's, you know, chest immediately? Do you cut the umbilical cord right, like, immediately? Definitely wanted, or do you let it, you know, pulsate till it stops? We wanted chest to, or skin to skin and delayed cord clamping. And they said, as long as the baby's okay, we can do some skin to skin and leave the umbilical cord intact yeah. and, until we need to cut it. Um, but they're like, you know, if baby's having a hard time breathing, we gotta cut that cord and, you know, resuscitate. And we're like, okay, we understand that, of course. So they, it's a lot of like, you're, you're scared, right? Because the doctor is distilling this fear in you from the, the get-go like, right, that, like there could be all these things breathe, wrong with then. your baby you know and then they ask you all these things that you want and then they kind of distill fear in you like if you don't get this this could happen or you know so you have to Just, go beyond that you know you have to ask all the questions I mean we asked a lot of these questions multiple times and throughout the night like with the the blood work thing like we had to talk through that with a few people and you know it's just you have to like stand up for what you want and just talk through it with people um, even if they don't agree with you um, don't feel guilty and then just give in because you right. feel guilt tripped into it yeah, yeah exactly and then I was definitely asked multiple times if I wanted pain meds um, <laughs> I mean, obviously so I was screaming too and I kept saying, no, I'm good, thank you, you know, I'm gonna do this. And I kept thinking in my head, like, there's, you know, I know there's all these women that have done this without pain meds or epidural, and like, I can do this. Even though, of course, I'm like, tempted, right? Because I'm in a hospital, and it's there, like, and I could easily ask for it. But I was like, nope, I'm gonna get through this, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna, you know, I was like, things I was, trying to do that I was planning on doing. I was like trying to visualize myself opening up and I think I was even yelling like open, <laughs> open. <laughs> just to like, you know, cause I didn't want to like hold it in and like tense up cause I was definitely tensing up. It's hard not to, but I was trying to visually open up as well. Um, but the thing I, it was like so funny I was, you know, talking to Ben about this after, I was like, you know, it's like we planned all these things we wanted for this birth and a lot of them didn't happen, right? Like obviously like the home birth didn't happen. And then we were gonna like, we wanted to like film the whole thing. <laughs> and like that didn't really happen. Like I think Ben recorded a little bit of me laboring at home. And then a little bit once the baby was born. But like that went out the window. I was gonna have like a whole playlist of like music and my uh, Christian like affirmations were gonna be on and like all this stuff. And I wanted to like be walking around and laboring and you know being a birth tub and even in the shower. But when it came down to it, it hurt for me to stand up. So like when I, I did take a shower at home to try and help the, the contractions and it didn't really feel good because it hurt for me to stand up because there was like all this pressure. So the only things that really felt good for me were to lay down. Um, so I was just switching to um, like the laying down on my different sides. And then I would go like on my hands and knees um, and we would like elevate the bed and I would be like, like that. Um, and that one kind of hurt a little bit, but I kept doing it because it felt like gravity was helping that was making every time you did that you made more progress that way than you did the other way I yeah guess. i could feel it yeah. totally and so i was like you know i gotta do this otherwise we're gonna be here forever <laughs> <laughs> i mean i wasn't really keeping track of time but i would kind of look at the clock every so often but time definitely went by pretty quick because i remember like being in there around 11 midnight and then all of a sudden looking and it was like 3 a.m and i was like whoa I cannot believe I've been laboring you know here for like three four hours already um so once we got into the room I feel like that's when things got even more intense and at that point I you know 
because before I was like breathing through them. Once we got into the room, it was like they were so intense. I was trying to breathe through them, but I had to like release some energy. I had to release something. So I was like being very vocal, ah! <laughs> screaming, um, because that just is what helped me get through them. Um, I would never like want to do that like in future pregnancies I hope I can not scream because that definitely released too much energy that I should have reserved for like the pushing um, but I remember I would like scream and then I was able to like breathe through it a little bit and then I would grab his hand and squeeze it or grab his arm and squeeze it or grab me slap me <laughs> no, hit me no. Uh -huh. I I would just grab for him and sometimes I might have accidentally like hit him choke me <laughs> um, or I would I was like grabbing like the rails to the bed so you know given that the baby came early I like wasn't as prepared you know I think um, looking back I would have I wish I would have like prepared myself to be like hey this baby could come early and like mentally prepare myself for that. But given that w the whole day we were kind of, we were in denial that I was in labor and then I just like wasn't ready for it. So I feel like my mental preparations, my breathing preparations, I just, I didn't practice them enough, I don't think, leading up to that point. And that might've been why I just like couldn't control myself too well once I was in labor. I mean, he was really great, like being there for me. When we were at home, we were timing the contractions. Once we got to the hospital, we were like, weren't really timing them. Um, you know, and he was really great, like talking me through it. And a big thing that really helped us both get through that whole night and morning in the hospital was praying. I feel like, you know, Ben would like keep praying. I remember, I think I would pray too, right? I would pray, I'd like to be speaking out loud, just like trying to connect and get through it and just really reaching out in that way. So yeah, we did, you know, did a lot of praying. I think that kind of helped us through everything. But, you know, prior to all this stuff getting more and more intense, they came in, right? And like, they sent a pediatrician in and they asked us what our birth plan was. That would have been something that we would have wanted prepped before. Yeah, right? see, I didn't even prep the birth plan. Yeah. I was going to do that, but I hadn't gotten to it yet. Um, so instead we had to just talk through the birth plan, but having like a written out birth plan is really key, especially when you're going into the hospital because there's so many people involved, then they all can get a copy of that birth plan and know exactly like what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't have a hospital bag packed and we didn't have like snacks and drinks packed so luckily Ben's mom put together a bunch of stuff for us um, once we realized you know we were gonna be at the hospital for a while and all we had was like two bananas that we brought <laughs> and I knew that like during labor I wanted to be able to like snack on stuff and keep my energy up that way, or at least drink, you know, coconut water and all these sorts of things. You see adrenals going. Yeah, so she brought us celery juice, coconut water, we had wild blueberry juice, um, a ton of different fruit. Um, what else was there? Uh, there was like, I think, leftovers from the night before. <laughs> like oh, we these did. little crab cake things, but oh, not I don't with think crab, we ate those. it was like lentils. No, they were veggie patties that I oh, made. Oh, veggie patties, okay. Um, you might have eaten those, but I didn't. I stuck to the fruit and the liquids, and Ben kept giving me wild blueberry shots, and he's like, okay, it's time for some celery, like you need to replenish. And I remember thinking like, I don't want that, but then I would like sip on it, and it, it was definitely key. The mineral salts, yeah. To have the mineral salts and the glucose all together to help get me through it. Um, yeah, it was like, I think my mom showed up, and Ashley was like, get these clothes off of me. <laughs> it was the and gown. Because they make you put a gown on, right? But she's like, when you were, you were just trying to get comfortable, right? I was, so you were like moving from this like, position to this position. Yeah. And then my mom walks in and you're just like, ah, 
cat day school. It was all. Oh, for I didn't. Me. I didn't even know she was. <laughs> she had walked in, and I just like ripped this gown off. <laughs> and it's funny because in the childbirth classes, they tell you that there's like a certain phase where you lose all modesty. <laughs> she was at this. Phase. And I was at that point, I guess, and that was probably like three o'clock in the morning or something. That was three. Yep. So this is like three hours into this whole thing, and. This just kept going on and on and on. I think right after three, um, the doctor came in and checked you. Okay. Again, and and you were at like six and a half. Six and a half, seven. Yep. And then. And I remember at that point, I mean, although that's like really good that I progressed, I remember thinking like I was disappointed that I wasn't at 10 and like it was time to push. Yeah. And at this point, her water hadn't even broke yet. So right. she was. Water hadn't broken. Yeah. She was just dilating little by little 5 45 a.m. a.m. and you're in that position where you're like on your knees and your elbows and oh is that yeah. oh I thought it was on my side but yeah I couldn't remember yeah and so and then yeah my water broke finally <laughs> yeah but prior to the water breaking there was a lot of like blood coming out and that's called the bloody show that's like a normal thing how long was that coming out for that probably started once you got it right around seven okay. centimeters or so. Yeah, and I think prior to kind of right around before my water broke, I was kind of feeling something else happening. Like I wasn't getting a strong urge to push, um, which they tell you like, and they kept saying like, let us know if you feel a strong urge to push. But I wasn't really feeling that. I kept feeling I needed to go number two. Um, and I was like, I feel like I kept feeling like I needed to go to the bathroom. Um, but really, I think it's just the baby's head was like way down there and that pressure was there. So then my water broke and then Ben goes and tells the nurse, you yeah. know, you said the nurse had a big uh, grin, like, big smile. On her face. I, I like walk out the door and I'm like, nurse, nurse, her water broke. And the nurse smiles and then walks in and <laughs> smiles again. And I'm like, what are you smiling for? And she's like, well, it's almost time. <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> so then she called the midwife to come and check me. And I was then nine and a half centimeters. Um, and and we're saying midwife because in the hospital they had right. midwives. It wasn't our planned midwives. Yeah, it was the midwife that they assigned to us that was on duty at that time. So Yeah, which was nice. Yeah. to have a midwife um so she checked me i was nine and a half centimeters and 10 centimeters is where you need to be to like push um so then another crack contraction went and then she was like okay like if you want to push and i was like all right i'm pushing <laughs> again i didn't really have like that strong urge to push that's what i was like waiting for but i did again i felt like i had to go number two and i think that was a, a, the urge to push yeah. Um, and so I start pushing and, you know, the baby's head, did the baby's head kind of pop at that first push? The, no, the first push you couldn't really see much. Okay. It was like probably the third push you finally can see like, it, the, the, the head looks weird. Yeah, yeah. when the head's coming out it doesn't look like a normal, it looks like you can see like the head but you can see like the veins in the... So like wavy? Yeah. Yeah, because I felt it at one of the pushes, and it felt, like, bumpy. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was, like, the third push. You could see the head. And she's like, okay, you know, I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing stuff. And then she pushed again, and then she had her hands kind of in there and yeah. was loose, loosening everything up. Yeah. And then she had so, some sort of cream or something that she, I think she oh, was using. To, to help help the baby slip out. Yeah, she was definitely helping to help maneuver the baby out but I just remember pushing and thinking holy moly <laughs> <laughs> this is really intense and I definitely felt that ring of fire that people talk about um but at that point you're just like oh my gosh like I've got to put all of my energy into this because I want this baby out now <laughs> And so I remember I kept pushing, the contractions would come like every minute. So it's like you rest for like a short period in between the pushing. And then I just remember thinking like, okay, it's 
what's gonna come out this next push, right? And then I kept pushing and finally, what was like seven, eight, nine pushes. Yeah, eight you could see, start to see like the forehead and oh stuff gosh, like that. Yeah. And then you really just like that ninth push, you just went, you pushed and that thing just well, slid right the out of you. Well, the midwife helped as well, I remember. But it popped out like, it wasn't like the head's out, Okay, push again. Oh, right. And then the, the, whole, shoulders. the whole body kind of like came out together. The whole body came out together. <laughs> Sl slided, slid right out, right? Yeah. Which, yeah, that was a big relief. I mean, you know, like if you look, like look at like the baby was thirty-four and a half weeks, right? But Anthony says like when the baby is ready to come, it's gonna come. Yeah. Right. Which is pretty so, cool. Like, Someone told us that after. The fact so once we heard that we were like oh that's that's pretty cool and so he was ready yeah and we were we we're looking back at it and we're like okay so yeah the baby was 34 and a half weeks but is maybe that's the way babies are supposed to be like maybe babies are supposed to be born at a younger age think of how much easier it was for her push that baby out of her than if she was 40 weeks and then that baby was like eight nine pounds you'd have a harder time pushing that out and then it got us thinking well you know we fed the baby all of like the things that that baby needed to grow we limited our fats and what they tell pregnant women who don't eat like us it's you know, eat a lot of dairy, eat a lot of eggs, eat a lot of meat, eat uh, liver. You know, in our birth class, this is what they were telling the women. So what does fat do? It slows down the growth of the baby. Right? Yeah, because fat blocks the nutrients from getting to your body. Which, to the placenta. Which we then associate it, you know, not getting to the baby as much either. Yeah. So you're slowing down the growth by consuming all these fats, which then makes the birthing process harder for a woman at 40 weeks than Ashley at, you know, 34 and a half weeks. Yeah, so, we don't know. This is our sort of a talk, talking out loud conclusion sort of, <laughs> sort of a thing because we felt like, okay, he came at 34 and a half weeks and he was five pounds, seven ounces, which we were super surprised. You know, we thought he was going to be well under five pounds um, coming out as a preterm baby. Um, but he came out, you know, a decent size for still having five more weeks to go potentially, right? And so the fact that he was that size, we felt like, you know, my diet with all the right foods and clean carbs and all that, you know, allowed him to grow so well. I mean, other people think, that you know maybe you were further ahead and you didn't track you know your cycle very yeah. well um oh, hey Duke. <laughs> this is like what the hospital was saying like, yeah but oh, i you're, you're actually like 34 and a half weeks yeah you know? but i oh, boy. you know i tracked my cycle pretty well because as you guys know we were trying for you know well over a year and a half and yeah it just got slaughtered <laughs> you got duped i got duped um yeah, so that's just our theory, right? Like, yeah. you know, baby came early, but baby was like more along the lines of 36 weeks, according to the doctors, which would have meant we were way off. You know, we yeah. were two weeks off on our yeah. pain. I think we think that it's more that babies are meant to come early if you eat this way or, because you're yeah. just when overloading the, the baby with all the right things to pop right out and be strong and ready to ready to go you know <laughs> uh and i forgot to mention that okay so they picked him up scoop put him on my chest and then as they were doing that saw that he was a boy and i guess that he whispered to me i said it's a boy it's a boy and i didn't even hear it because i was just like oh baby <laughs> she's this is what happened so when the baby came out she's like Give me the my baby. I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I said She said it and she just forget. I did? Yes, you were oh like, my gosh. give me the baby. I wish give you would have filmed that. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, because yeah, then 
they put him on my chest and I remember thinking like oh I wonder if it's a boy or a girl but I was okay like waiting and just enjoying my time but then the nurse then like looked and said that it was a boy so but I wish I would have heard you say it because that's more special or I would have rather looked but it's okay it's whatever yeah baby was healthy and on my chest and I was just relieved that he was finally out and yeah so he came out and then you know he was breathing he was fine they put him on me he started crying right he started crying immediately right away. yeah immediately, this cute yeah. little cry um and then to me i don't even remember how long he was on me for how long did they let me do this 20 thing? minutes like 20 minutes because then they did need to like take him to the NICU to just like check on him and make sure he was okay but he was breathing fine, so they didn't need to do the steroid shot. So we were glad that we said, hey, let's wait, you know, opposed to just doing it to do it. Um, and then they let the placenta uh, or the umbilical cord um, keep going. Here I'm crying. Um, and then they let the, um, they waited to cut the cord until it was done pulsating. So that was good. And then Ben got to cut the cord. Yeah, that was cool. Right? And then eventually they needed to take him to the NICU. Um, so Ben went with him just to make sure, um, you know, to be his advocate. And no, make sure. no funny business. Yeah, so if that <laughs> happens, you make sure the dad or someone is going with the baby to the NICU yeah. because you want to make sure they're not doing any extra things. Yeah, so Ben went with the baby to the NICU and then they were tending to me, cleaning me up. I had um, just like the tiniest little tear inside, um, but not something that needed a stitch. They offered me a stitch, but I was like, nope, that's fine. I'll just heal na naturally. Um, not, not necessary to have a stitch for that. And then, yeah, so you went to the NICU and they wanted to give him antibiotics, right? So yeah, I go to into the NICU and the pediatrician's there and two nurses and we're kind of like, we're like doing stuff to the baby. I'm asking like, okay, what, did, what are you doing there? You know, why are you doing that? Why does he need that? You know, and like they gave him an IV because he needed fluid until Ashley could start producing milk. So that was something they had to do. They um, wanted to take blood, same thing. I did the quarter vial thing. I refused to let them take a full vial. They were taking blood to do a blood test to check for bacteria to see if he had an infection. Because when Ashley's water break, the, the time between Ashley's water breaking and the delivery, there's a possible chance for infection from bacteria. And so that's why they do that blood work. And uh, what they wanted to do was give him antibiotics, like right then and there, yeah, in case there like was an infection, before they even finished the test. Um, and I said, you know, I don't want that done. Do the test, and if he has bacteria, we can talk about that right. then. So. Right. And my water was, it was like what? 15, 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes until he was born, so. Yeah. So. No, no, you know, antibiotics, no, no steroids. They made you fill out paperwork to just say, say that you're denying the Hep B shot, the vitamin K, and the eye gook. That was cool. Um, so yeah, we just, I just followed him, and then they took me back to Ashley once they had him yeah. settled in, and he was just laying there. So yeah, he was at the NICU. Um, then came back and uh, they were pretty much done with me and then uh, we got to go to our room um, but on the way we got to go see him at the NICU and that was that was fun and we took a little photo there um, and then we were in the hospital for two nights but got to visit him as much as we wanted over at the NICU yeah and, um, so. yeah but we'll yeah, that's, we'll do another video. I think like this video, we just, <laughs> we wanted to just go through like the birth story the, and just cover yeah, everything. Everything up until baby coming out, right? Yeah. And then basically we stayed in the hospital for additional nights. We're going to do another video kind of going through, through that. All the that. Aspect, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's how it happened. And you know, 
all I can say is just be prepared for anything. You know, you think, oh, I'm gonna have my own birth, I'm healthy, and you know, I'm gonna not have a hospital birth. Well, you don't know. <laughs> Baby might come early and you might have to do a hospital birth. So uh, I definitely learned from this that you just gotta be prepared for everything and every experience. Um, yeah, I remember even thinking during our childbirth classes, we had to like practice uh, positions in the car and you know, we did the practice, but I remember thinking like, oh, we're not gonna need this. And then we did. <laughs> so, but thank you guys. We are so happy to share this with you and um, we look forward to talking about more. Yeah, and sorry we couldn't get um, any, really any footage, but <laughs> We figured you'd love to hear the story because yeah. it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys later. See ya. Bye.